आवाज करो ना गुड इवनिंग एवरीवन एंड वेलकम टू दिस अड्डा रिमेंबरिंग शोमित्रो ऑर्गेनाइज बाय सिलुएट फिल्म मैगजीन एंड ब्लू पेंसिल पब्लिशर्स टुडे इन हाफ एन आवर्स टाइम इन द इंडियन सुपर लीग we have the biggest derby of indian football between mohan bagan and east bengal it is the 100th year of the rivalry starting in 1921 and one that is integral to the bengali psyche for this last 100 years and half an hour before that we will be talking about someone who in his own way is also fundamental to the bengali essence the bengali cultural heritage and the quintessential bengali mind and yet shomsh chattopadhyay in parallel is as much international as well as rovindranath thakur and shotojit rai uh, shomitro is a multifarious talent who dabbled uh, in diverse fields in cinema theater art and literature and it is impossible to discuss all these aspects in depth and we will refrain from doing so as well in our today's adda rather what we will try to do is we will try to reminisce him as an artist and a person and listen from two luminaries who have worked with him closely for many years and have been his friend for a long time so i welcome shormila thakur ma'am and catherine barge from paris uh we will start off with a small clip from the film gach which is the first documentary on shomitra babu uh in english and i think it is also the first documentary on him as such as well and both our guests today are uh, related to it catherine uh, was the director of uh, uh, gach and shormila ji acted in it so i think we will first uh, watch a short clip of gach uh in that opu shongshar scene and then we will take our discussion so we will have the clip of gach played now it was a transformation which was unbelievable you know yesterday this is 9 day which is 9 day 9 Well, I would think um, what uh, Aparna felt at that time, and I felt at the same time, was almost the same thing. Because uh, the first shot was that there was this door, and I was behind the door, and uh, the camera was on the other side of the door, and uh, I was standing there with uh, Apu Shomitra. my first uh, hero and um, we heard maniga said action and shomitra looked around at me and said are you nervous um so i didn't have time to reply because i was just thinking about whatever i can't remember and then suddenly maniga said action and the door opened apu entered looked at me and said come in and i literally crossed over the threshold and uh, that was a new life for me as well as aparna but it wasn't the same because i was trying to think what aparna may have felt at that time and me at that time so it was somewhat real and somewhat unreal and you go up and then you see the sky and i realized what made manik to choose this place as an adult but that was the beauty of it that you went up there and you felt free you felt that yes uh, you were near to the sky of 
his recitation and uh, his ability to to be so sensitive and uh, and yet um, you know sort of living in the dream world and uh, also transferring a lot of that energy into creativity like uh, poetry theater writing and he observes and he has that hope you know he's an optimistic ami holam himadri angaj moina pakhar jalai jole dube roichi baba pakhar jalai to ki babar hoto ekbar nimcha dekhi ha mod nakhi da 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 janish kulu he so he's a born romantic and he's emotional and i guess that's what we used you know his eyes and his voice and and the scene in apushan sharma he's free as a bird reciting aka manush kono daitya nei bandhan nei jhanjhat nei karo jonno kono matha batha nei kar kena nigri korte jabo ei bhabe boi bhabe bari bhabe dei jabe obosshoi eta unnati korte hobe na unnati hobe rojgar na kore dekh jader moddhe shotti kore talent ache na tader chakri korar dorkar hoy na good dikhe फ्लूट I'll dedicate this book, and I look around and I said, "O to shakta katha bujhi na," because he's been teaching me English. He's been teaching me CAT CAT and MAT MAT and the earlier scene, and um, he pays no attention and he looks away, still dreaming, and he says to my wife, and I say, "Wife mane jani," and he looks at me, and he says, "Tumi jano na, ami jani." which i thought was so lovely because she didn't know like earlier we were talking about being grown up and being a wife etc she didn't know the meaning of wife but he knew he knew what a wife meant um, everything from a poet's point of view like a playmate a perfect playmate i thought that was uh, very nice Just marvelous! It's really, Upushankar created a 
gold standard of romance, if you please, right. in Bengal or perhaps in the world, I would say. And Catherine, uh, what a wonderful uh, documentary. Like you saw me, you know, she took me to that Tala place, right. where we shot Upu uh -huh. 30 years, it was 30 years later, yes. Yes. and nothing had changed. You know, that Kaltala, everything was the same. And that same staircase, and as I say in the documentary, you know, I realized why a poet would thrive there, because it's away from the cacophony of the city. Once you go there, and it's, you're under the open sky, and you're alone, and you're free to create. And again, when I saw the the short clip that you, the late motif that even, you know, when she is preparing the unun and uh, waking up, the you can hear the train in the background. Uh, so it's still a journey, you know, it's not a destination. Maniga's films are, you know, not about destination. It's about the journey, Opu's journey from his uh you know, when he's with his friend, full of optimism and hope, to romance, and then later, you know, anger and resignation, and then meeting his son, and uh, falling in love again, if you please, and then assuming responsibility, and appreciating beautiful things, like uh, the innocence, and finding his own innocence. And there are two scenes in Opu Shankar. I don't know, I mean, the way I see it, when uh, the mother, Papuna's mother, blesses Opu and say, says, Beje uh, Thako, mm. live long. And you suddenly, you know, remember Shot Bujaya, you know, Opu's mother. For some reason, every time I see the film, I feel that Opu somewhere whether it's consciously done by Upu or not, I don't think so. But Shorbu Joya, you know, the whole trilogy is sort of interconnected with each other. Mm -hmm. And the presence of Shorbu Joya is very apparent there. And so there are many scenes like that, uh, which is the range that Shomitro has in his first film. And even in that, the bridge scene, you know, when he's talking to Kulu. Yeah. And... Uh, He's talking to somebody off camera you know, before running away, a policeman. Mm. I mean, look at the voice modulation then. You know, the film, you know, even the actors then, even the well sought up actors, were not quite so natural, not quite so, um, because of his theater background, because of his uh, literature background, you know. It came very naturally to him, the, and yet, um, and he brought a very new kind of energy. Shomitra did, yes. Nopu Shamsha, yes. and the combination of Aparna and Nopu uh, truly was magnificent. And then later, also with Kajol and Nopu, you know, first his reluctance and his rejection of his father. And then when he says, I'm your, I'm your bondhu, I'm your friend, then slowly acceptance and the, you know, the intrigue yep. building up. And then later, both of them, it, it's just, just magnificent. I mean, it's really a brilliant film and it will live as long as there is cinema. And uh, I think uh, in the first two films, for both you and for Mitra Babu, it was Opus Shongshar and Devi. And in yeah. both of them, uh, that shadow of Shottujit Rai was there. But after those two films, you made Kinu Gualar Goli and Bornali. Uh, so how, how did you find Shomitra Babu, Shomitra Babu's acting in these films where that, uh, that element of Shottujit Rai was not there? I think that's a very unfair remark because he's not a... Shomitra so, is not an extension of Shotojit Rai. No. You know? He never was and never will be. So, as an actor, obviously, he was groomed. Like I say earlier, he was groomed by Shishit Bhaduri, yeah. by 
his love for literature, his exposure to theater. Be being the sort of person he was, he was seeking out more and more to educate himself, to make himself better, right? So anybody who comes from Maniga's school would want to go further, would want to take it forward. And so did Shomitro. I mean, he embraced Bengali cinema wholeheartedly mm. and continued to give better and better performance. And Bornali, you know, that uh, Bhadra look, you know, uh, Dhuti Pandavi and, yes. and, and so, uh, so sensitive, so sensitive, you know, tries to, uh, protecting her, yes. protecting me from the hurt of finding out that the right. person I love and waiting for for so many years is actually marrying somebody else and it's a it's just a happening of one one day and how beautifully Ajay Kaur you know weaves the story and Tino Goal and Boli also so many other films it's, I didn't really work in that many films with Shomitra and we were going to work in a again a wonderful film but that stopped for some reason and then there was a gap and I came back but then our friendship started from Bornali and it was effortless and comfortable because Shomitra was that kind of person. Wherever he was, he engaged with his surroundings and he was himself and he gave a lot of himself. He was a very generous oh. person. So it was, uh, you know, fun to be with him and always a learning experience till the last one had so much to learn from him because he kept, kept, uh, you know, expanding his horizon and his self, and from one thought to another, to you know, at almost at philosophical level, you know, thinking of death or anxieties, and uh, and yet uh, being so resilient, you know, yes. hanging in there. So I'm sorry, I'm digressing. You asked me about. Uh, you know, my experience of working with him in Bengal. I don't have an opinion of him, like I don't judge him as an actor, but I can see that whatever potential he had in him, he kept on honing it and perfecting it. It's like Tarulata's when Manikda asked him to write. It's not that anybody else could have written that letter. He was not even, it was not necessary for Shomitra to be in the frame. But he learned to write the pre rabindric writing right. for no rhyme or reason, just to better himself. So he was that sort of a person. He was looking at things with a different eye and imbibing from it, whether it was literature, music, poetry. You look at the range the man had and his engagement with people, with me. You know, like I felt that I, you know, having one day's adda mm. made me know so much more about things. Mm. And his, he, I mean, you're talking about Shotiji Rai, but he had immense respect for uh, Tapun Sinha. Mm. You know, he used to go to his house and have long uh, sessions. I mean, that was his main thing because through adda comes. Uh, you know, learning through enjoyment and conversing with each other. Like, I envy you that you had this time when you've written this wonderful book, Mama, reminiscing about, you know, the conversations you've had with him. And I had so longed, and Catherine made a film on Shomitra uh, and again had time to probe his, his being, so to speak. And I so longed to have that one-on-one -on -one conversation because I felt I could have also brought out an, another aspect of his because he was so comfortable with me. You know, there was implicit trust. Like I trusted him as an actor, as a friend, you know, and so did he. It was not essential that we meet each other every day or talk to each other, but perhaps at a certain time that when we met in that young age. And then so he knew all about me. I knew all about him. 
it would have been i don't know what conversation what it would have brought out but it never happened and towards the end he was not very happy flying he didn't want to fly he had this anxiety about flying and i was living in another city um uh, so that's my regret you know like i never really had a recorded adda with him otherwise unrecorded adda i've had so many times and like i said it was always a enriching experience thank you uh, shonmila ji uh, we will move to catherine uh, catherine you again like every discussion of shomitra some what or the other starts with or at one point in time uh, involved shotojit rai and we know that your uh, knowing of shomitra happened because you found that this is one actor who is uh, repeating in uh, shotojit rai's films so if you can just very briefly let our audience also know a bit about the background of gach in the sense that how the idea came to you and uh, also uh, your first impression of shomitra once you met him in kolkata where you called him up probably and spoke to him and he asked you to come down to kolkata for the documentary so if you can just give us a brief background of gach our viewers had just seen that uh, clip which is a marvelous one the entire film is also in youtube so they can watch it but if you can just give us a background of gach and your fast interactions with him briefly <laughs> well it all started almost 30 years ago i lived in new york at the time and it was uh, the end of uh, the year i mean may graduation time and satyajit uh, satyajit uh, sutujit rai passed away and one of my professors in at columbia asked me Uh, told me if you love Ray so much, why don't you uh, try to make a have a, a brown bag lecture about Ray? So I said I did it. You know, as a French uh, citizen, of course we Ray from his first films was very highly recognized in Europe and in France. He got the prize at the Cannes Festival, then at Venice Festival. then years later uh, mitterrand president mitterrand came to yeah. calcutta to award uh, shomitra with the, the commander de la legion d'honneur and there were a lot, many festivals uh, in paris but i lived in new york and uh, i i uh, okay i said i do it and i did it about the home and the world uh, the film and the novel by tagore a couple of years later i was back to paris I I lived in Paris at that time and one of my best girlfriends was traveling to India and to Calcutta and I asked that lady young lady if, if you love me try to find Shamitu Chatterjee's address and phone number and she did mm-hmm. <laughs> which is amazing because in traveling and uh, and uh, I think the Alliance Française from Calcutta gave her and uh, that girlfriend faxed me uh, was in the southwest of France in the country faxed me uh, Shamitu's phone number and at the same time I read in a French paper that Merchant Ivory James Ivory Small Merchant were restoring uh, race films uh, so I kept everything and only one year later I called Calcutta and I uh, I said uh, Mr Chatterjee ha huh? <laughs> my name is Catherine Berge I'm calling you from Paris and I would like to make a film about you he said a film about me why don't you come to Calcutta I said sure <laughs> that's a, I mean it's an incredible story the same week uh, a friend of mine president for Warner Brothers in Paris said I cannot have lunch with you i'm having lunch with this male merchant and that's the how the whole thing started and met his male and uh, you know uh, merchant ivory and ray were in competition at uh, the berlin berlin uh, film festival uh, for charulata and shakespeare wala and uh, ray had uh, composed the music and there was a cameraman uh, Chubutu Mitru that I met with this man in Calcutta I and mean, it's amazing for me 
anyway, so uh, as I know, I knew that uh, Shomitu was. So Ismail told me, "You want to make a film about this actor?" Uh, I said, "Yes, it's a film in India." Uh, and then he said, "That sounds great. Have you contacted him?" I said, "Yes, I'm ready to leave." And he, he said, "Okay, no more than twenty thousand rupees." I don't know. As a producer, he told me about rupees. And uh, then uh, Tommy was so busy, and he said, uh, "Okay, we meet on the tenth of June at ten o'clock." I said, "Fine." And <laughs> so, at on the tenth of June of nineteen ninety six. I was staying at the Fairlawner Hotel uh, on Sutter Street, and a dream <laughs> came alive. <laughs> I mean, show me to arrive with a satchel full of uh, poems, sketches. I don't know what he had in his satchel, treasures for me. And we 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 did a dance. <laughs> we chatted for three year, three days, I think, and then I went to see him on stage on the theater, and. Everything I liked. I mean, uh, I mean, the theater part was so touching for me, and I had I didn't know that he was a great uh, theater actor when I left for Calcutta at the time. And uh, then I, thanks to Shami too, I met Robbie Gosh and Mrs. Ray and Madhavi Mukherjee and Aparna Sen and Shamila. I tried in Delhi, but. I was just one day. It was not possible at the time. So uh, then I wrote. With, I had a small tape recorder, and I wrote everything down. And then I thought it would be a good title, a tree. But then I called Shami too. I said, "How do you translate tree in uh, Bangla?" <laughs> so he gave me a few words, and uh, then I selected Gach because I I love the sound of Gach. So. That's it existed at that uh, summer 1996. Then I sent the text, uh, the synopsis to Ismail Merchant in New York, and he came to Paris in October. He said, "Fine, we do it in January." So that was it. That's how it started. Uh, I think, uh, as I have already said, when. I, you know, I was when I was in at the Fairlawn Hotel waiting for Shomitu Chatterjee, and when I saw him coming, <laughs> I mean, it's all the characters, you know, from uh, uh, Opu, of course, and uh, Amal, and all the others. Days and night in the forest. I don't know the characters. I don't remember the characters' name. And they were all coming <laughs> at the same time. It was like in a fantasy world, and there is a a painting, uh, not of uh, I mean of Dickens, surrounded by his characters, and that was sort of the same idea. They were fiction characters in one human being coming to me. <laughs> it was so weird. I mean, it was between fantasy and real life, and obviously we he, he, we got into such a intense conversation at that for three days because and then he showed me his sketches and uh, his poems he talked about poetry as i said the satchel was for me i was mesmerized and uh, actually when i left for calcutta uh, for christmas of 96 I, I flew on christmas night which is amazing and i had bought brought a new satchel for shomitsu chatterjee because the, the satchel was kind of very old <laughs> but uh, that again it's shomitsu and all his entire world in the satchel i mean of as you know poetry sketches and and during the making of gatch uh, of course uh, i had written a sort a script but I had to add some scenes, you know, because he would keep on uh, telling stories, you know, like uh, the adaptation of Tugenev, were based on his childhood father stories. And then, uh, well, the sketch about Van Gogh. Uh, so I wanted to add, it, gradually every day, I would add a sequence that this one would become insane. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, 
And of course, the scene that we, we saw the beginning uh, of Shamitu and Sharmila together in 1996, it's amazing. Uh, it was not, I never expected it to happen. But uh, we went to Tolligan Studios and uh, uh, Taban Sina was shooting a film with Shamitu Chatterjee and Sharmila, you came and then I, I might have asked you, can you chat together <laughs> and I said both languages and that's it's a miracle because when even when James Cyvery saw the rushes and he was, was very impressed by that dialogue of between Shamila and Shamitu and uh, and I I love it and I love the cigarette thing I mean it's <laughs> yeah, I, I was just one question to Sharmila ji here that cigarette thing when you said that I Cover for actor was it spontaneous or or it was like something in the script? Are you asking me? Yes. Uh, I... No, no, no. Of course, it was in the script. Okay. Cover for the actor, and uh, it was not my handwriting. Somebody had. No, I'm, I'm talking about in Gach when you mentioned. Oh, that... no, 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 no. There was no script. Uh, Catherine no. said, uh, "Have a chat," That's and it okay. so happened that uh, Shomitra was smoking. Yeah. So I said, I'm still smoking. I've been telling you for years. <laughs> you know, in the whole I've been telling you, don't smoke. And you're still smoking. So first, uh, Shomitra didn't get it, you right. know. Right. And then he started laughing and uh, he got it. So, you know. Yeah, yeah Catherine, like, uh, uh, it happens, I think, for most of us when we see someone on screen or in front who is somewhere in our dreams. Like if we are watching Sharmila ji right now as well, there are so many images from so many films which are coming in our mind. So it happens with uh, all the great actors and actresses. I think if you meet them in person or see them in close quarters, then a lot of memories, our memories come uh, come back. So it happened with me, with Sharmila Babu for the first time as well. It is happening right now, seeing Sharmila Thakur with us. So many memories are coming back. So uh, I, I will I will ask Sharmila ji, uh, if the second stint with uh, Shomitra Babu, I think happened with Arunne Dinratri, which was roughly 10 years yeah. after. Yeah. And uh, the role of Oshim, the character Katrin, the name was Oshim. So that Oshim was a totally different character from Opu or even Uma Prashad in Devi. So in these 10 years, like if you can just shed your experience working in Aurangzeb Dinaratri and with Shomitra for uh, in oh, that was the best ever. The entire film was shot outdoors. Yes. So and it was very very hot those days. So we used to work only about three hours in the morning, say six o'clock till perhaps till ten o'clock, mm -hmm. and then again from three o'clock in the afternoon till six o'clock. Mm -hmm. So that way we worked. And it was wonderful. There was Gobi Kosh, Shomit Banjo, Shubhendu, and uh, Simi, of course, Kabiri mm. So It was a humble cast. And everybody got along with everybody. And Manikda, of course, we stayed in one uh, place. Uh, Kabiri Di and Simi stayed in another place. And uh, Manikda and Shomit stayed in another place with uh, Bhumshida, etc. And uh, but first, you know, Manikda used to come and visit us because there was so much time to kill in between. Mm -hmm. And uh, then Manikda stopped coming because he would, everybody would be hiding their cigarettes and <laughs> being very, very proper and well behaved in front of him. So he, so Bhumshida was a regular visitor. So during that time, uh, when we worked, I found Shomitru. He's just done Tarulata and uh, other films with uh, Maninda. So this was sort of Maninda going solo without Shubhya Kumitru, you know. He was operating the camera. Bhumshida was, of course, still there. But it was mostly outdoors. So, so he was very uh, focused on the language. He was very... Like I said earlier, that he was writing a particular kind of a script which existed before. You know, right now, what we use is more Rabindrik, you know, the way Tagore wrote. Before that, 
was another kind of writing. So he was perfecting that in Tarulata. Here he was kind of, uh, because of Oshin being very particular about dialogue delivery. So this confidence was far more palpable. Mm. It suited the role as well, because he was the leader of the pack, so to speak, and very self-absorbed, very conscious of what effect he is having on the opposite sex. He was, uh, you know, very full of himself. Uh, and it's like Manita showing a mirror to us. Like, aren't we like that? You know, most of us are very self-absorbed. and But at the same time, we have the potential to become a better person. So like, you know, with Ashim, it's the same thing. Mm. When he comes into contact with Aparna, whom he can't make out, as he says, that, you know, Aparna ke thik buste na. So, you know, her intelligence, her composure, her uh, way of dealing with the situation without getting, uh, you know, without blaming anybody else. And, uh, you know, Shomitra is such a bad loser. And he's kind of exposed while we are playing that memory game that how tense he gets. He doesn't, uh, you know, he doesn't like the idea even of losing. Especially to a woman, oh my God, you know. <laughs> so without really battering his ego, without really hurting his ego, how Aparna is able to convey. And uh, so, you know, reaches out to his better self. Mm. At the, towards the end of the film, uh, he kind of confesses that and he expresses a desire to meet her. And she writes on that five rupee note, which right. she had received from him in yeah. the fair. So she returns right. money while writing the a phone number on it. Mm. And uh, so there is money that leaves the door open that perhaps they will meet in Kolkata. Perhaps they'll have, you know, their association will grow. And then later, uh, Gautam Ghosh builds on it when he meets the you know, up her name. Yeah. You know, they're married and they have a daughter, which is uh, Gautam's take on it. So it's a, his, uh, he never really stopped growing because he was an actor and he was very focused on his work and gave it all he had. And uh, whatever anxiety he may have had about finance or whatever else, but when he was in on stage or on a film set, that anxiety vanished. He's kind of, even the younger filmmakers were thinking of him. Mm. And he got such wonderful roles towards the end of his uh, career and excelled in them. So he, he was, his career graph was very consistent and gradually he covered almost every aspect of, uh, you know, played procession of characters, you know, and he made a place for himself, a permanent place in the heart of his uh, Bengali audience. And we saw what happened on the 15th of November when whole of Calcutta kind of poured onto the streets of Kolkata with, with their tribute of music and songs and poetry, it was like celebration of his life uh, with uh, the chief minister leading and everyone, every balcony was full. So he was, uh, uh, I mean, he gave us wonderful performances. Uh, yeah. Catherine, uh, I think uh, on a similar note, uh, you once mentioned to me in an interview that you watched Sir Lawrence Olivier in London uh, playing Shylock in Merchant of Venice and how he took the breath away of the audience. And you felt similar experience watching Shomitra Babu in Raja Liyar uh, in Kolkata. Uh, so if we, again, it is not a comparison, but if you reflect uh, how you look at Shomitra Babu as an actor 
I think you have predominantly watched him in Shotujit Rai's films. But as an actor, vis-a-vis the other actors which you have watched, maybe in France or other or in other places. Well, uh, it, it is absolutely true. I saw, I saw Sir Lawrence Olivia was lucky enough, was very young in London. And uh, it again, so many years later, I was, uh, I could, I, I, when I knew from you that uh, Shomitu had started uh, performing uh, Rajalir, I thought this is the time to go back to Kolkata, uh, really. And I just left, I called Shomitu, and I had uh, some idea for a short film about the uh, road trip uh, between, in France, between uh, uh, Tagore and uh, uh, French philanthropist banker uh, during World War One, but that so I filmed a few scenes, and then when I went to the theater, uh, actually I, I I saw Rajalir I think four times, and I was uh, with this young Spanish student you remember, and we were when Shomitu appeared on stage. Uh, as Rajalir, uh, we were totally uh, hypnotized. We were we couldn't move. We wanted to scream. I mean, <laughs> it was incredible. So it is true that uh, I had this emotion uh, of watching a great actor, like Sir, one of the greatest actors, like Sir Lawrence Olivier, and. Uh, the same uh, 40 years later, I don't, I don't think, yeah, uh, with the show me to Chatterjee. I mean, the, the, the theater part is very important for me. Uh, you know, my father was a, a doctor at the Paris Opera. So I saw uh, as a child, many, I attended many operas and the smell of the costumes, the makeup, and I, I Felt the same emotion, of course, in Calcutta, in Kolkata, <laughs> and with Shamitru uh, uh, letting me, uh, sharing with me, uh, also how he approached parts for theater. I'm sure for films, but mainly race because it's true. I didn't know Tapan Sina's film. Then I bought the DVDs, but um, as I I have already maybe told you my pleasure when I was flying to Qatar was once I flew and you have sent me an email, uh, Amitavu, saying try to come to the Sri Bashu theater. And I, I it was like a 20 hours trip and I was totally out of it. But when when I reached Calcutta Airport, I said, I have to go. So, <laughs> and the, the following day, Show Me Too Chatterjee was performing. So that was at the Sri Bashu Theater. It was a tribute to him. The following day, there was a performance at maybe Utampura Theater. As the first thing I would do in Calcutta was to meet Shomitu in the green room with the makeup man. And Shomitu would explain to me the part and how he approached the characters. And it's very, very, very private. I mean, this is my relationship to Shomitu. It's to, to, in the green room, I went myself to another world. I mean, he introduced me to... Uh, Bang Bengali culture, I, I could, uh, through his words, I could imagine, I'm Ray, I've never met him, you know, and uh, Tagore, of course not, but I I was able to imagine uh, uh, Calcutta in de decades ago, and he was, he wa as Shamila said, he was very modest, uh, Shamitu, and he was trying to to learn something always he was trying to learn and uh, he would ask me if, i mean i would come what in, in 2016 i flew three times to calcutta so i i saw him quite a while and i interviewed him about theater uh it's uh, i have the footage and I, hopefully i'm going to edit it soon with uh, an editor uh, who lives close by but yeah, he, he he would give. He was a giver. I mean, with me anyway. So I, 
I learned so much from him. I mean, I don't know. It's a life companion in a way. I mean, I met uh, I met him first time ninety six, last time two thousand and eighteen for the Legion of Honor, and and as I say also when I first saw him at the Fralon Hotel, and he okay okay he was all these characters, but I had met him in a way at 20, 30, 40, 50, when he arrived, reached the Fallon Hotel. So it's a lifelong companionship. I mean, and he is in, like he says, like Shamitu says in Gatch about Ray, Satyajitra, about the, the scene with the, about the funeral. And mm. he, Shamitu says, we think about it, or we, in Calcutta, we have an anecdote, or, and I think uh, about Shomitu uh, all the time. <laughs> He's a life companion. I mean, okay. I, Catherine, will... I just want to want to just uh, ask you one specific question because you said that he is a companion for life for many of us. Uh, how how was his popularity in France? Like I know that for the Legion of Honor, uh, uh, you were uh, one of the most in instrumental persons in uh, in in the application of stuff. But how was his uh, popularity in terms of uh, his films being seen and uh, probably discussed after his death? I think there were a lot of articles, and I I saw a lot of footage and uh, newspaper clippings from not only France, but other parts of the world as well. But apart from that, like, is his films discussed as such amongst the people who know, obviously, Indian culture and Indian films? Well, of, obviously, he's uh, in France, and uh, I'm sure in Germany, and he's linked to Shami to Sutuji to, tribe. To, 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 I mean, uh, I remember a friend uh, uh, when he, s he immediately said Opu, you know, so it's like in many countries, it's linked to the trilogy, the, num the, f the third film, and uh, Chaulat, I think mainly, and for the Legion of Honor, as you know, uh, I had asked the French consul, I said it would be great to try to get the Legion of Honor for Shami to Chatterjee. And the young consul immediately said yes, and he wrote a letter, and the ambassador came to Calcutta and understood, the new ambassador, uh, understood the importance of giving such an honor to such a great actor. Uh, and actually, well, this is the link to friends, but it's mainly, I think, uh, linked to Ray and all, uh, and also, as you know, uh, Toscan Duplantier, a pro French producer, and Gérard Depardieu, of course, produced uh, the Prince of the Tree. Yeah, yes. and uh, they were very active in giving the Legion of Honor for Ray, <laughs> the producer and our mega star Gérard Depardieu. But uh, that's it. I mean, uh, I think it's really linked to all the race films, which are very highly considered and have a big audience in France. Yeah. OK, uh, I will now just guide our viewers uh, through a few slides uh, on, on a book which was published in January this year. It, it is titled uh, Marmas, Silent Steals with Shomitra Chatterjee. I'll just share the screen. I'm trying to share the screen. <laughs> just bear with me for a minute. Uh, is it coming in the screen? Yes. OK. So uh, there are. Uh, this is a book which uh, was published by Blue Pencil Publishers. And uh, it has received rave reviews from uh, film personalities and uh, critics. Uh, we have Sharmila Ji. She has gone through the book and was gracious enough to give her comments. We have comments from uh, Sham Benegal and forward from Sham Benegal and comments from Mr. Adur Gopalakrishnan, Otonu Ghosh, and others. And there are uh, 
quite a few books on uh, on Shomikshu Babu, which had come up uh, in the last few years. And this is one among them. But if you go through the contents, you will find that uh, this book is slightly different from the normal biographies which we uh, get to read about film personalities. So it is not a biography of him. Uh, it is different from that. And the idea of this book stems from the discussions I had with him for over the last few years. And I spoke to him about many anxieties which I had. Uh, and I had questions and hazy perceptions, unresolved miseries. And it is as much a book of my journey as my interactions with him. Uh, and in our discussions, as Shormilaji mentioned a few minutes back, there were certain common themes which uh, include separation, return, fear, death. And we discussed painting, poetry, and reading books. Uh, books were something which I think connected us. And we seldom discussed cinema. His cinema, I think, we very less discussed. I think we outgrew that phase in our relationship and our friendship. And yet the difference in our respective ages laid bare in front of us. He used to say he was at the brink of life. And I wished, probably, I wish to know beforehand what lies beyond the precipice. Uh, those who will be interested in uh, finding out the ordinary man beneath the facade of a star may be interested in looking this book up. It is available in Amazon, and there is a discount which is uh, running. Uh, I think it will be till the, end, uh, till the middle of uh, December. Uh, I will uh, now uh, read uh, I will now just read a, a small excerpt from this book uh, which uh, I wanted to. It is called the three words and a pause. Three words making a sentence are very strong in English because there has to be a verb almost always. I love you. You repel me. He is dead. Very strong, subtle and pungent, like the beads of a poem. Poetry is the strongest form of literature, because poems can hold one captive to the pages and also liberate her through a vacuum of emotions. Poems are strings balanced on feelings, not like bards that glide passionless in air. Bards seldom have self-doubts. Poems do. A bard doesn't evolve by piercing the air in ether. A poet hopelessly aspires to. A successful poet, an accepted one, desires to be someone different. It is a shiny morning. There is a crisp air of benevolence all around. Shomitra Babu lifts his eyes from a book of Bengali poems that I had published a few years back and tells me, this whole business of entertainment is a permanence of erosion. He continues, you know, we all need to move out more, out of us. Whatever we do, act or write or paint. Just like failure puts you outside, success does the same as well. He no longer looks, though his head is turned towards me. His eyes are still, but there is a search, beyond, far. Beneath the heaps of praise, he goes to sleep every day of his life. I insist he probes further before me as I ask, what do you take with you to sleep every night? The successes or the failures? Coffee is served in small cups with sugar-free tablets alongside. I prefer black coffee without sugar. Now, nah, I cannot have it without a sweetener. That's appalling, he concludes. I smile at him. We have previously discussed the small sweetening life offers us, but differently. He's mixing the tablet in his coffee with a teaspoon. There is a whirring sound from the wall-mounted fan, which makes more noise than the effect it is for. Occasionally, the spoon touches the insides of the cup and makes a sweet sound. He's stirring the coffee with all concentration and probably taking his time to rearrange his thoughts. 
then he finally says, still looking closely at the circles of motion on the surface of coffee in the cup in his hand. I don't look back in general. That will make me stagnant. I love to do things, work, keeping me engaged. He slowly lifts his head and looks at me again. Amitabh, going to sleep every night means getting up again the next morning. Most mornings are so same. Most nights dread me of the same morning. I know this feeling. Since nothing ever changes, the lives flow on with success or in failure, external, outside, and we glide like birds without emotions, with no remorse, no guilt. I have come today to speak about a possible selected translation of his Bengali poems in English. A public publisher requested me to ask him if he's agree agreeable to the idea. A selection of 50 or 60, a first anthology of his poems in translation. We will decide on the translator later on. The publisher insisted that I mention this bit to him. So I am today in his drawing room asking for a permission. There is a sudden silence in the room that we are trying to bridge with our waiting for the other to speak. It is getting late for his lunch. I start to feel sorry for the gloom. Is it a wrong question that I ask? Do I rub any hidden wound, a sore pain in the life of an artist? He gets up finally and bids me goodbye. Another day, Amitabho, a better day, maybe. We come, up, come out of his room. I have left him here so many times in darkness with light. He reaches out and pats me on my shoulders with an impish grin. Why don't you? He leaves me with the three words. In the sky, the stars seem to smile down from behind the luminance of noon. Their happy tears drizzle down the canopy, overshadowing his driveway, touching my head, the way some grandparents carry their grandchildren. Three words, way too feeble, make mornings a memory of happiness. Sharmila ji, I, uh, I would like to ask you, what is so unique about Shomitra Babu, according to you? Like you said, it's a constant introspection, constant looking around and making sense of what he's seeing. Mm. And uh, like in, in everything, like whatever he sought, there was no there was no superficiality in that. He did it wholeheartedly. He was curious, and when he was younger, there was a lot of energy, and there was a different kind of curiosity and bubbliness, and you know, humor, and it was all sort of imploding, exploding, etc. But then it sort of quietened down, and there was a bit of sadness, a bit of uh, uh, sense of losing time a sense of anxiety, but what kept him so relevant was his pursuit of truth. If you if you want me to be absolutely succinct in using the word, truth about his surroundings, about himself, about his emotion, and questioning, like like you said just now, let the morning be. There's a dread about tomorrow morning, what it might bring. Let it be a happy one. So there's anxiety and hope. So basically, I would say that he was an optimist. He never, never lost sight of it. And whatever he did, whether it was like Paul told me that it was the end, he was painting. Yes. And he was reading. So he didn't say that I know everything about everything. Mm. He was always, his life was a quest of knowing himself and knowing things around him. But he, did, he didn't do it superficially. Mm. He wanted to hone uh, 
the earnestness and the in conversation with you with a younger person who was interested in him at the same time challenged him also you know made him uh, face a certain things um so i think so what you have brought out is what he was at that time you know grappling with his thoughts and thinking about it knowing that he was becoming physically uh, overtaken by many frailties uh, burdened with lot of uh, family responsibilities that he had to work enjoying the work at the same time you know burdened by it also so there were lot of things happening but i i would like to think that uppermost in his mind was if not happiness but uh, kind of knowledge that he was doing the right thing that he has never never really let himself down you know and he was he did whatever he believed in so his slate was clean you know so he was just a very thinking person and sometimes getting very entangled like instead of you if i was there i would have sort of untangled it a little bit i would sit down and have a drink and relax and don't worry about it so much you know who knows you know and it's okay to say we know nothing and we will never know anything about anything you know but his attachment to knowledge and truth and his search for it his journey and his quest i think that is what kept him interesting and relevant and at the end youthful yes. despite his age and despite his whatever he was uh, you know confronting um he remained youthful in his yes, he had this ability to remain surprised by the small nuances of life absolutely his curiosity everything like like finding the world in a grain so to speak and being puzzled and surprised at the same time and deriving happiness and incredulity at the same time you know so he had that and that is what really made me so he made him so special to me yes. you know he never really fancied himself he never really said who oh, i have achieved so much in my life there was a constant doubt and a constant introspection but he led his normal life he was attached to his work he gave it 100% mm. and uh, like i said uh, people rewarded him mm. he didn't perhaps know about it but there was such a connection with everybody he did his own bazaar he was unlike a star you know he didn't hide from the world went and face that morning every day and he went to bed with his thoughts so he was in a continuous process of growing and going forward you know with curiosity and every aspect of him was searching for something in his last way so i think he led a very exemplary and inspiring life and we had so much as catherine said to learn from him and to be inspired by him and he left us uh, a lot of work that we can see so many poetry that we can hear over and over again and uh, so many memories you know life long memories and i i don't think there is anybody like him who knew so much in depth about literature about sports about politics about music and uh, and had original thoughts and original questions about them you know engaged with them with his all his being so i would say that he was alive very much alive to his and he will continue to be alive even after he is gone because despite whatever he might have told you and shared with you he 
is a very vibrant person and his legacy will always thrive with that you know that energetic beat that will not stop that's yeah. why even a year later so many tributes are still pouring in and will continue to pour in and people will make more and you know, different things about him or write differently so he was that kind of person and his memory will stay alive for a very long time thank you thank you uh, we already know how versatile shankar babu was as, as an actor and he was also a poet since his adolescent days and close to a thousand poems which were published in bangla uh, i had the opportunity of translating a few of them which was mentioned in that excerpt as well um, and i will read just one of those translated poems uh, i think it will help us to understand uh, and appreciate him as a deeply sensitive artist uh, not only an actor but a deeply sensitive person uh, and to me this aspect of sensitivity and this poetic mind probably sustained him for so many years in an industry which was probably a bit uh, difficult to work in at least in his later part of his life in multiple uh, multiple ways but i will just read one one of the poems for and we will see like how deeply sensitive he was some days some days a river wakes up in this body breaks down the banks all that was safe flow away in torrent some days love raises tidal waves in the mind markets offices shops wash wash away in the tsunami some days wailing for beauty fills up the sky and wind songs of spring some days a river awaken beats the drum to wake you up from your sleep spring songs try to assure you all that is no more may need not be lost some days memories become real memories turn into truth catherine uh, we are at the end of our uh, discussion today uh, i will return to you with the same question i asked uh, shonmila ji how do you remember shonmila ji babu as a unique creative person and as a friend well <clears throat> It, he was making art. I mean, that to to attend that. I mean, you know, like the sketch of Van Gogh. I was amazed uh, at his, his creativity, <laughs> and also like when we forgot. Uh, I told show me to uh, we'll try uh, King Lear, and he said, "Oh, I would like to do the translation." You know, he, he always wanted. to 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 contribute or and to enrich himself also maybe <laughs> uh, the, the working on that translation for him he said oh i've done the translation last night and it was good for him he, he really and that i was fascinated though i am fascinated by his ability to do anything you know i mean sketching and reciting and tribal twist in there's a night in the forest <laughs> that was, i love that scene so much and uh, when you ask me about actors by the way uh, he was in gage quoting ronald coleman fred astaire yeah. but in yeah. uh, there's a night in the forest when he's in a bathing suit and uh, i thought of carry grant too um, <laughs> his elegance a kind of elegance and uh, the way of uh, mixing you know the trouble and yeah uh, but i will uh, i will always i've never been uh, i mean yeah i met before show me true because i had chosen to write my phd about king vidor and mm -hmm. uh, he was also as a very old man trying to build he, he made his first camera with so boxes and he was trying to build all the time and was show me true i was attending you know he was really trying to be any part acting and writing and reciting and sketching and i don't know so many things and it was uh, it's the best uh, 
best uh, entertainment, if we can say so, that I've attended. I mean, not entertainment, but he was able to. So I was fascinated, actually, really, honestly. And it was really worthwhile uh, flying 20 hours to to be with him in the green room, honestly. Uh, oh, I will... I remember and the way he was explaining to me uh, his parts was it was very intimate but very he was really giving trying to give me the most uh, he could do for culturally uh, I mean for the Bengali culture and uh, that's it I mean I don't know we can talk for hours but Yes. I, he, I was fascinated by the way he built art with his hands and with his thoughts, with his voice. And also, like in Gatch, when he talks about uh, changing his uh, voice uh, for or, or the, for Chahulata, not the voice. But I, I mean, who, who, how many actors can do that? Maybe American actors like Robert De Niro, and they can, but he really tried so ah, yeah the changing the writing that's not mm -hmm. the voice for charulata he changes handwriting how many actors do that i mean it's it's a constant uh, i have constant admiration and uh, so much he was also a giver and he let me give him affection you know and so it's a unique uh, international sort of friendship <laughs> and uh, it's, what can okay. i add <laughs> <laughs> yes you, you rightly said it we can go on for hours but we have a time limit and we have to close uh, this adda which is again a very bengali thing but i think catherine you picked it up for the last 30 years or so you have been coming to kolkata you have picked up the adda bit of it. And we had many addas with you uh, uh, for for so many years. I'm extremely grateful to both of you uh, for relieving your memories of Shomitra Babu with us. Uh, I also thank uh, Antaran on the Mondol of uh, Blue Pencil Publishers for arranging not only this event, but uh, the entire event for the month from 15 November to 15 December. We are having this event with Shomitra, um, event coming up so we will be having a quiz uh, sometime next week uh, do look into this blue pencil page for the quiz there are prizes to be won uh, i think yes uh, over to Antara if you can just say a few words as the publisher of marmars thank you amitabha for organizing and anchoring this absolutely fabulous session fabulous Sharmila ji, Catherine, it's indeed a huge, huge honor and privilege for us that you agreed to participate in this discussion, tribute to uh, Sri Shomitra Chatterjee. On behalf of Blue Pencil and Silhouette Magazine team, I thank you both. Amitabha's book, uh, Mama's, has been a wonderful and very unique journey for all of us. So appreciating films and music through our articles and books and igniting discussions around them has been our exploration at uh, Silhouette and Blue Pencil. But today's session will be a memorable milestone always. And personally for me, this is the most amazing dream come true to meet you both. I really thank you. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Merci. I think we will go. Merci. <laughs> I don't know whether the pronunciation. No, it's still their time. It's ah, still their time. <laughs> Bye, Catherine. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Big, Thank you. Big hugs. Big, Big hugs. hugs. <laughs> Merci beaucoup. Okay, then. Bye, then.